Today I'm gonna dismount and refurbish the hydrostatic transmission to my lawnmower Stiga Park. I start with the dismount the oil pan of the transmission. On the top of the oil pan there is two oil plugs. The rest is bolts for losing the oil pan. On the oil pan there is a couple of tags uh, that are made for breaking it loose with a screwdriver. There is no gasket on this oil pan, but it is a liquid gasket that you have to add later on. The oil filter here is uh, like a cup, it's not a uh, hole through it. The new oil filter has a gasket in both ends. This cog wheels is hauled by the oil pan. When you remove the oil pan, they are loose to remove. The hydraulic pump and the hydraulic motor is hauled down by the three screws that I'm removing now. For this it's a 15mm socket. To remove the pump uh, and the uh, motor package you may have to break a little bit with the screwdrivers. After breaking it loose it's just to lift it out by hand. The hydraulic motor easily falls apart if you don't hold it together with the wedge. Here you see the hydraulic motor with the wedge. Uh, the wedge is possible to mount back upside down. What happens then is that uh, when you push front it will go backwards. Pistons and bearings looks good here so we keep it. The housing surface has been scratched due to lack of oil and need to be polished. Don't forget to put back the pin when reassemble and when you turn over the housing it easily fall out. This is the pump I remove, it works exactly the same as the motor uh, and also this one will fall apart if you don't hold it together. The pump is pushed against the washer that is spherical in the bottom. When you push the forward it swivel one way and uh, reverse swivels the other way. That is how it works. The thrust washer can be a little bit difficult to get out. There is a spring around the drive shaft. Don't forget to put it back. And here is the swiveling thrust plate or thrust bearing. And in the bottom there is two sliding bearings. They can be a little bit difficult to remove, but they are not attached there in other way than just laying in there. After removing the hydraulic pump and the hydraulic motor unit, I will remove the brake. The brake is just two metal parts that are pushing on a flange on the cogwheel. After that we will remove the drive shafts and the differential gears. Nothing is attached by bolts. The shaft is hauled by a C-ring and here I just drop the C-ring down the gearbox, but that's no problem. The other side is uh, identical. So just do the same procedure on this side and uh, everything will slide out. Inside a large cogwheel there is two small differential cogwheels. You have to be careful and hold it together or this will fall apart as you take it out. Now we can remove the cogwheels and uh, take out the drive shaft.
and here I removed a small cog wheels. And uh, the C ring that I dropped down before. After pulling out uh, the drive shafts, you can remove the bushings that uh, the drive shaft is riding in. All of it looks really good and don't need to be replaced. Now the gearbox is empty and we will remove the gaskets for the drive shafts. The drive shafts are broken and leaking a lot and that is uh, the root cause for this gearbox stopping. The gaskets on both sides was completely finished and leaking a lot of oil and that makes the oil pump suck air and it stops immediately. And because of this we got the scratches on the pump house surface. Here Peter is uh, mounting the two new uh, gaskets for the shafts. Here we are using a special tool for uh, mounting the gaskets so they don't get nicked or damaged. The gaskets are really easy to change and almost impossible to get to. All the Swedish talking in the background is uh, from my so-called help. And Peter is better mechanic than cameraman. The first thing we need to put back is the sliding bearings. Then we put back the pivoting uh, thrust plate. The thrust plate can be angled uh, for giving drive forward or backwards. When it's lying flat it don't pump at all. Now the thrust plate is back. After that it's uh, time to put in the spring around the shaft and then it's the hydraulic pump. You need to hold this together carefully or it will fall out pistons and springs and stuff everywhere. The pump is driven by a shaft that has a pulley mounted in one end and driven by the motor. Then we assemble the pump house with the motor and uh, the surface for the pump has been polished and that was enough for getting full torque again. Here you have to push the pump pistons in uh, really deep so you can get the, the wedge into its track. If you turn this wedge upside down the machine will work backwards. Then it's just uh, tied down the three screws and uh, the pump house is back. When everything is in place, I just tighten it down with the machine. I didn't find out the proper torque, so I just tighten it about. And uh, that is about right. Then we assemble the brake again, it's just to drop the metal pieces down there and it works. Now I put back the drive shafts and the bushings that it rides in. Um, there is of course a lot of talking in the background still. <laughs> The bushings for the drive shafts are the same as uh, it was from the beginning. I don't see any wear at all, so we just reuse them. Then we assemble all the cogwheels and stuff uh, 
just the same way we took it apart. And uh, make sure that you are holding all the differential cog wheels together so they don't fall apart. And there was the first side mounted, now the cog wheel will hang on there. And then it's just to fit the next uh, drive shaft and the cog wheels. I am holding the cog wheels in an approximate position. When the shaft uh, goes in there and everything ends up in the right positions, it goes by itself. When everything is in its place, it's just to put back the locking uh, pieces, the C-ring and other stuff. First I put in the C-ring and you have to hold it in place until you get the other little uh, piece in there or it will just fall apart. And then there is the next side, it's the same procedure. First the C-ring and then the other little thingy, whatever it is called. And uh, now the differential is working again. And then we just drop in the last cog wheel and it's all holden down by the oil pan later on. Here is the new oil filter. The numbers is on the bag, you can buy it on the internet. This one is uh, not like a cup, but it has a gasket in each end and that works too. The old filter was absolutely clogged and in the center of the filter there is a magnet and uh, this mm -hmm. magnet was also full with metal shavings. Both surfaces on the gearbox and the oil pan has been cleaned so now we will put the liquid gasket onto this. I have been uh, running my lawnmower after this uh, fix uh, for about uh, two months now and uh, not a single drop of oil has leaked out. And then I put back the oil pan so everything is hold down and uh, the gasket gets uh, sealing up and uh, drying up. And you can hear a click when the oil pan is in the right position. And then you can tighten everything down. There is a lot of bolts, but at the other hand it needs a lot of bolts to stay keep the oil inside. When all the bolts are tightened down, it's time for the drive unit. First it is the belt pulley and the spring. And after that is the fan for cooling. And there is something that looks not a nut, but it's not threaded. So you just put it on and then you put a locking ring on top of it. After the fan is in place, it's time to fill oil. Filling oil in this hole is almost impossible. It just goes back because the air has nowhere to go. Oy. But uh, in the background you see a black uh, plastic cap. If you pop that black uh, plastic cap, you can fill the oil there and let the air escape out through the hole where we are filling the oil now. That works a lot better. Now we have removed the plastic cap. It is not threaded or anything. You just need to bend it out with a screwdriver. And then you can easily fill the 
gearbox full with oil and this gearbox should be absolutely full uh, all the way up now it's time for a test run pulling the lever for front and backwards so you see that it works in both directions 